Hi, my name is Dave. Today I have a very nice treat for you. This is the Goto Kogaku Single Axis 78. It's a 78 millimeter telescope dating from the 1950s, about 1952, according to Stu Squires, who is an expert on Gotos. Um, and by the way, this scope was loaned to me by Stu. Thank you very much. I appreciate the loan. Stu assembled this scope from an OTA, the tube, and the mount, which were separate. He brought them together. He says they're a compatible match, and I'll believe it. Uh, it's a beautiful scope. The finder is slightly different than the original would have been on the, uh, shown in the ads, but everything else is identical. Stu says the optics are perfect and beautiful in the scope, as you would expect. What is really spectacular about this telescope is the mount. That mount, this extremely interesting mount, this is the single axis mount, wonderful design, absolutely beautiful. Look at the elegant lines on this thing, it's just spectacular. However, um, that design also makes it somewhat problematic. Probably the proper name for this is an inverted fork kind of a mount. Really, really strange mount. This crazy kind of gooseneck formation here. Whoops, uh-oh. Huh. As you can see, the reason for this structure here is an attempt to make it possible to allow these weights to clear the mount. In certain positions, it's just still not possible. Let me show you how to adjust the weights. The weights go like so. There's a lock back here. I'll show you that. This also moves in declination, like so. This is set up in equatorial mode. Now, if you're lucky, <laughs> the weights will clear and you'll be able to see what you want to see. This is the slow motion for uh, declination. It's only got a limited amount of travel. There's uh, sort of a limited um, amount of motion there, but it does give you some slow motion. Kind of a push-pull configuration. This is where you tighten and loosen the declination axis. Here's your lock for right ascension. And here is the right ascension slow motion. I took it off just to show you what it looks like because it's confusing to see all that on there. So this goes on here like so. Whoop, uh-oh, ran into the mount. There's a surprise. Let's change that a little bit. I don't run into it. Okay, now we've cleared the mount. But now notice how it's it wants to go this way. See, balancing this thing is just a challenge, I'll tell you, at least at this latitude. If we put it straight up, it'll be better. I'll show you. For demonstration purposes, I've taken the original telescope and weights off. Put on a couple of dummy weights. These are very light. Uh, so I can now move this stuff around much more easily and demonstrate the various positions. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is here in uh, Altaz mode. Obviously, you've got very good flexibility. You just keep the weights down, counterbalancing the tube perfectly, no matter where you are. So that's that. Now, let's assume that north is behind me and change the latitude. So now I've got it at, uh, I don't know, maybe 60 degrees or so. And let's, uh, let's take a look at what's going on here. 
Okay, now with the counterweights in this position, I'm in pretty good shape. Whoops, ran into that a little bit. Well, in that case, if I run into something, what I do is I change the position of the counterweights, like so. And then I don't have that problem. Let's take it over on the other side. Let's suppose we're looking up in the northern hemisphere up here somewhere. You can see I've got pretty good flexibility there for high latitude. It works pretty well. Now right, let's change the counterweights to something sort of normal like that. Still running into that one sometimes. Well, that's the idea having the adjustable counterweights so when you get into an odd position you don't run into things it does make balancing the scope pretty tricky okay so that's north behind me 60 degrees or so let's try a different latitude this is about 40 degrees latitude. You can see I'm running into things down here, so I'm gonna to have to put these weights in different position again. Maybe way out here. Okay, that will work. Or up here. Pretty well, I'm gonna run into that a little bit. Now let's go on the, let's see. I'm looking towards the ecliptic here, maybe, or something. But what if I'm in the northern skies over here? We get into some very interesting positions. I think you can understand now why I made the dummy counterweights. And of course, if I go farther south than this, it's going to be tricky. Very, very tricky. Now let's assume that you've, for whatever reason, decided to be on that side of the mount. Now north is going to suddenly be this way. Okay, so north is that way now. And now I'm looking at the ecliptic. So now I'm on the ecliptic. Things are not bad, but I'm running into the I'm running into the mount here with that counterweight. Same over here. Uh, so we'll move the counterweights around, maybe like this. And that kind of avoids the problem. Let's try it on the other side. This is like about 60 degrees north. Yeah, I'm going to have a little problem there, so I'm going to have to move the counterweights around again. Let's go way forward over here. <laughs> Isn't it the strangest looking telescope now you've ever seen? <laughs> I have to tell you. Wow! <laughs> Beautiful! Bizarre! Strange looking telescope mount. All right, we're at the south latitude now. Uh, this is looking towards the pole. Let's go to a more sort of a standard position, maybe like this. I don't know whether the inf interference is worse over here. I think the interference is worse on this side. In other words, if you set it up with the uh, with the counterweights that way, north behind you, and this uh, gooseneck like that, I think you get more interference problems. It's pretty much six of one, half a dozen of the other, though. I mean, it's really... <laughs> I cannot get over how unusual and strange this mount is. This is your latitude adjustment. Now, you loosen that, and then you can use this to adjust the... How's that for fancy? This is the azimuth 
slow motion. There are three bolts down here holding the mount on. If you loosen those, you can adjust the azimuth here for changing the azimuth. The intention here was so that you could pull or align this quite accurately. Here's the head. And when you assemble this thing, there are three slots here. This is very much like a modern Celestron. Three slots, you match the, those three slots up with the three appropriate holes in the mount. And you have to get this little pin in here. Match those three pins up, screw in, and you're all set. Look at these. Look at that. How's that for beefy? You... Let's take a close look at this mount. Look at this beautiful casting here. Quite elegant. Kind of the hallmark of this mount. Now I've got this Goto Kogaku single axis SA78 set up next to its sibling, which is another single axis telescope called the Eros. I don't know if this one has a particular name. It's very unclear from the advertising. Anyway, this one is uh, the bigger one, the smaller one, but almost identical. All the structure up here is very, very similar. The slow motion is the same, the double counterweight situation is the same. This from down here, this is quite different. It's extremely rare. You will very seldom see two of these set up in the same location at the same time. I promise you. Now I have the single axis mount set up next to its sibling, which is another single axis mount. This one is called the Eros. These structures here are virtually identical. The counterweights over here, the little, uh, mechanism, this locking mechanism for releasing the, for moving the counterweights around. You can adjust the counterweights like so. It's all of this stuff is identical. Where it changes is down here. This has got this uh, interesting ball head kind of a mount. It doesn't have any, you know, this mechanism for the fine uh, adjustment of the altitude and azimuth. Those aren't here on this mount. This is just uh, Go with what you got sort of a deal. Very, very interesting mounts. There's supposed to be another one that's even smaller than these two, 42 millimeter or something. Wow, would I like to get my hands on one of those. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the extremely strange and bizarre Goto Single Axis 78 Telescope. Thank you for watching.